what's up guys, Marco here, welcome back to another lesson. Today I want to talk to you about movable chords. You know, chords that we can move in different positions of the neck to create beautiful sounding chords. Now we already explored this topic many times already and there is always a way to come up with new things as long as you spend a little bit of time experimenting with new chord shapes. Last time we did it, we talked about the D major 7 chord. And we moved this beautiful shape all the way up to the fret number 9 to play the A major 7 chord. And you guys loved this video. Now in this lesson, we're going to talk about the major 7 chord one more time. However, I want to show you how important it is to not only learn the chord shape, but also learn the notes that make up the chords. Let me give you a quick example. In the previous video, we learned that this is a D major 7 chord. And if we move this position all the way up to the fret number 9, we will be playing an A major 7 chord. I mean, the chord shape is the same, therefore the chord should be the same. Now for this particular chord, it works. However, the chord that we're going to learn today is this one. It's a beautiful E major 7 chord played with the low E string, the root note, the G string fret number 1, the note G sharp, the major 3rd, the B string fret number 4, the D sharp, the major 7, and the E string open, the root note. Now we're going to transpose this chord all the way up to the fret number 9. So we're going to have the G string fret number 9 with the note E, the B string fret number 12 with the note B, and the E string open. The bass note is going to be the A. So you might think that because this is an E major 7 chord, if we move this shape all the way up to the fret number 9 and we change the bass note, we end up with an A major 7 chord, right? Well, actually not really, at least not in this case. In fact, if we analyze the notes of the A major chord, we realize that we have the note A, which is the root note, the note E, which is the perfect fifth, we have the note B, which is the major second, and we have the E again, which is another fifth. So this is an E major 7 chord, and this is an A sus 2 chord. And when you think about it, if you listen to the sound of the chord, they do sound different. I mean, this is a beautiful dreamy chord. The E major 7 chord. The A sus 2 chord sounds a little bit more pop and bright. We are also going to explore another shape that can be moved around a lot, which is the minor shape. First step, guys, you want to familiarize yourself with the chords. Spend a little bit of time getting used to the finger stretch between the index and the pinky. Now, as you can see, the major 7 chord played with this shape doesn't really sound great. And this is because of the cluster between the D sharp and the note E. If we play the chord simultaneously, doesn't sound amazing and so we're gonna break down this chord into single notes so we're gonna play it with an arpeggio we're gonna be using this beautiful um, eight notes arpeggio now we're gonna have the index always on the G string the middle always on the B string and the ring always on the E string the thumb will change depending on which bass note we are playing. For the E major 7 we're going to have the low E string and then the index, middle, index, ring, index, middle and index. We're going to repeat it twice for each chord and then from here we slide all the way up to the fret number 9 and 12 and we change the bass, we plug the A string back to the A, sus2. The 
The second time we play the ace has two, we're gonna play one arpeggio, a full round of arpeggio, and then we play the bass, the B string, fret number 12, 10, and the E string open. Now let me show you how we can make the chords a little bit more melodic by adding a melody between the chords, like this. So as you can see now we have one round with the finger picking pattern. And then we have the melody on the G string. The first time played simultaneously with the bass note, the low E string and the G string together with thumb and index. And then the E string open. Then we have the fret number two, four and nine. And for each one of these notes, we are going to alternate the top E string open. Now we are already in this position, so we can put down the A major chord, the A sus2 chord, sorry. We do one round, and then the melody here will start on the G string, fret number nine, fret number 11, 13, and back to the fret number nine. Now you can either slide with the same finger, or you can just change the left hand fingering. We go back to the E major 7. And the A. The second time we play the A sus2, we're gonna change the melody. We're gonna uh, go back to the first position. So we're gonna play the uh, G string fret number 9. 8, 6, and then we're gonna play the B string open with the middle finger and the E string open. Now obviously we could have played the B string on the fret number four right here and just keep the same shape, same symmetrical shape. However, the next chord is going to be the F sharp minor chord. And so you can simplify the chord change by playing the B string open and the E string open just to make the chord change easier. Let's give a structure to the exercise and add a different section. In here, we're still going to explore um, symmetrical chords. So I just wanna show you how we can move a simple chord shape in different positions to create a beautiful chord progression. It sounds like this. This is another great example of how important it is to not only learn the chord shape, but also the notes. In fact, the chord shape here is very simple. We have the low E string and the G string on fret number two, fret number four, fret number nine, and fret number 11. When we're going to add the open strings to this shape, so the B string and the E string, this is when we can add a lot more color to the chords. Now the first chord is going to be an F sharp minor 11 chord. I have the F sharp, which is the root note, the G uh, string for number two, which is the note A, the minor third, the B string open is the fourth, which in this case is the 11th, and the E string is the minor seventh. It's a beautiful sounding chord. F sharp minor 11. The finger picking pattern is slightly more rhythmic. We have thumb, index, middle, thumb, index, middle, thumb and ring. It's what I call the 3-3-2 three, three, pattern. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Now the second chord will have the same shape but on fret number four. So you could think that if this is an F sharp minor 11 chord, then this one is a G sharp minor 11 chord. However, this is not the case. In fact, when we analyze the notes, we realize that this is actually an E major chord with the G sharp on the bass. We have the G sharp, which is the third, the B, which is the fifth, another B, which is the fifth, 
and the E string open, which is the E, the root note. The next chord, friend number nine, the C sharp. Now, which chord is going to be? A C sharp minor seven chord. We have the C sharp, the root note. We have the E, which is the minor third. The note B with the B string open, which is the minor seven. And the E again with the minor third. The last chord is pretty interesting. Now, this is a B major chord but with the third on the bass. So I have the D sharp, which is the third, the F sharp, which is the fifth, the B string open, which is the root note, and the E string is the fourth. So this is a beautiful B sus four with the D sharp on the bass. Now we're gonna use the same finger picking pattern. So we have thumb, index, middle, thumb, index, middle, thumb, ring, thumb, index, middle, index, middle, thumb, ring, thumb, index, middle, thumb, index, middle, thumb, ring. Again. We finish the B major, right? Seven and eight. Bass. We finish with the A sus two. So the same arpeggio. Then the bass. And then the B string, fret number 12, simultaneously with the E string open. Then fret number 10, 9. And we finish with the E major 7 chord. It's such a beautiful chord progression, guys. Now, in this lesson, I want you to learn two things. First of all, movable chords. We already know that. Sometimes we learn a chord shape and then we can move it. It sounds beautiful. However, always learn the notes that make up each one of the chords because sometimes you have the same shape but the same shape will give you a different set of notes in a different position. And so it's not going to be the same chord all the time. Now I'm gonna leave you to practice with these beautiful chords. Make sure that you take it step by step, learn one section at a time, and then implement these beautiful chords in the uh, you know things that you already play. So enjoy the chords, have a lovely rest of the day, and I'll see you soon.